so my name is Kerstin Gottschild. I am a product manager at Indigit. And yeah, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, our webinar will be about um, digital banking and FX payments with Indigit and WISE. I will introduce to our topic with um, showing how Indigit enables um, digital banking with an ecosystem approach. We explain um, how banks can use our ecosystem hub to offer new innovative services to their end customers. And um, yeah, with WISE, we also uh, present a concrete use case. And for this, I'm very happy to have Jane from WISE on board. Um, WISE is a strong partner of Indigit. They were found in 2011, based in London, and they are growing really fast. So now they have about uh, 2,500 employees serving about 10 million customers across the globe. And yeah, in the end, what WISE does is to offer a very fast and low cost option for and customers to perform cross-border uh, payments. Um, let's start with some general facts about Indigit first before we dive um, into the main topic. So Indigit has been found in 2016. Since that, we grew up to a team of about um, 60 to 65 employees. Um, our headquarter is in Munich, but we are located in four different locations in Europe. We are heavily present uh, also in Swiss, where we also have a strong customer base. And all in all, we have 30 customers from 10 different countries uh, who trust in our solutions. And we are a strong, uh, we have a strong partner network with about um, 45 to 50 best of breed fintechs. Um, yeah, in fact, Indigit supports a variety of different banks to open their systems to the outside, to create new API-based business models. We originally started in the PSD2 area and then moved towards building ecosystems with which our customers can provide new banking services towards um, their end customers. And in our customer base, you find big traditional banks, but also new innovative players like a Solaris Bank, for example. And we do not support financial institutions only, but in general, digital players um, who support digital business models like mobility, for example. Um, we are a we are members of different expert associations in the API banking community. So, for instance, we are a member of the advisory board of the Berlin Group. We also actively participate in the development um, of open banking APIs based on the API standards or another central API standard. And we are part of the Open Wealth Initiative, which aims at developing standardized APIs to exchange wealth data. And besides that, we are an associated member of SFTI. We work closely with the F10 startup program and with Six Dealing. Um, yeah, to dive into today's topic, I will introduce you to the Endigit ecosystem approach first. I will then show in which areas ecosystems can be built. And um, then I will hand over to Jane, who will show a very concrete use case, wise of X payments, and explain how banks can benefit from such a solution. And then I will close our talk with a short demo of the wise Endigit integration. So um, we from Indigit, we strongly believe in the principle of ecosystems. So we strongly um, believe in the synergies that arise from um, networking between banks and fintechs. Um, yeah, the question is why? Because um, both the bank and the fintech as well as the end customer benefit from such a network. 
And by connecting um, with other players, the bank can provide um, complementary products that go um, beyond its core competencies. And with that, it can generate new revenue streams. Um, it is important to us that we can offer um, the best and the most innovative solutions to our bank customers, which is why we cooperate with a lot of younger fintechs. And in the end, we target the, um, the end customer with our solution, meaning that we want to provide a um, more attractive product and service portfolio to the end customer of a bank. And in here, we see our role as the facilitator who makes it as easy as possible to build up such ecosystems. So um, our offering here is a platform which disposes the frictions and the um, issues that arise with the implementation of, um, of use cases. Um, yeah, what do we actually mean when we talk about ecosystems? So in the center, we have the bank that already provides products and services to its customers and makes them available via different channels, um, also via digital channels. And yeah, the bank has its core areas where it's pretty strong, where it can serve the customer with strong expertise, with good services, with strong competencies. Um, but there are also areas in which customers might feel underserved. And sooner or later, they will look for a solution with other players in the market. And to prevent customer churn and to increase customer retention, the bank will have to serve the needs of its customers with additional offerings. Mm. Now, the question is, how can the bank deal with this, with this innovation pool, with this innovation demand? Um, well, on the one side, of course, it can build new products and services itself, but this can be very expensive and often banks are not even capable of implementing their own solutions. And another possibility is um, to buy innovative services and products from um, fintechs and third party providers and offer them as a complement to the own products um, in the customer channels. And yeah, with that, the bank can increase customer retention, but also with new customers because it can stand out from other competitors in the market um, with a more attractive product portfolio to its end customer. And I think. Yeah, what is very important to emphasize here is that this is a low risk opportunity for banks because we speak about passive revenues. So the bank does not have to put much effort into achieving these additional revenues. Um, but the idea is rather to use already existing channels um, to the customer and to benefit from revenues that third party make um, with the end customer. Um, yeah, ecosystems are possible in varying application areas and they can be built for different target groups. Um, for instance, small companies and freelancers are one customer group that are um, usually um, yeah, not treated by a bank with the, with the same priorities as big corporates and um, therefore they often feel underserved. And we have selected partners with which we can provide an all-embracing package for SME banking. Um, yeah, but I will explain that in more detail later. Um, and Digit also provides strong solutions in the wealth area. As I said, we are a member of the open wealth community. And as such a member, we work with different wealth techs which allows us to address, um, for instance, external asset managers, other institutional partners, um, all in the end with the goal to provide um, more innovative products and services to wealthy end customers and clients. Um, we also um, 
we also have a strong focus on the lending area where we recently provide a digital loan platform. There are different types of loan products which can be connected via our platform into the offering of not only banks, but also um, e-commerce merchants and yeah, other digital players. Um, in the end, to fulfill the financing needs of retail customers, but also corporates as end customers. And I mean, these are only selected examples where we see high potential for ecosystems, but there are a lot of more possible application areas. We have a strong heterogeneous partner network. Um, with which we can support a broad set of use cases for different target customer groups. Um, yeah, to us, it is important um, to be connected with varying partners in different areas so that we are highly flexible and capable of serving a broad variety of use cases. And many of our partners are not limited to a single target group only, but in fact, their solutions are applicable to multiple segments. And let's take WISE here as an example. WISE is a strong component of our SME ecosystem, but of course, it can also be a complementary payment solution for retail customers. Um, well, this is one possible solution of an SME banking ecosystem. So we have different modules connected to provide an all-in-one, all-inclusive um, package to SME and customers. Um, yeah, so with the Contrivista Finance Management, um, freelancers can gain a transparent overview of their financial situation. They can aggregate data from different bank accounts into one central dashboard. They can perform liquidity checks on the data to potentially disclose cash shortages and so on. And then an integration between the accounting tool and the bank account allows um, SME banking customers to automate their, um, their auto, uh, accounting activities like uh, invoicing and billing. And here we work with different accounting software providers. And in this case, we have Stepdesk as a very strong partner on board. And on top, we offer pre-connected lending solutions, um, which help SMEs to optimize their cash flows. So for instance, open invoice could be sold via Billy to optimize liquidity. And last but not least, we have WISE, a central component in our SME SME banking ecosystem with which uh, banking customers can execute and receive international transactions in a very convenient and fast way at low cost. And um, at this point, I am happy to hand over to my co-speaker, Jane, who will give you a more detailed overview of why. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Kirsten, I appreciate that. Um, and a big thank you to obviously everyone for joining our webinar today. Um, so as mentioned, my name is Jane. So I'm on the Wise for Banks team, uh, specifically looking after banks across both the UK and the European region. Um, so as you can see, this is our mission. So it's focused on delivering money without borders in an instant, convenient, transparent, and obviously at a low cost. Um, so if we just move on to the next slide. Perfect. So this is a bit about whys and numbers. Um, so obviously, as Kirsten mentioned, we have accumulated over 10 million customers worldwide. That's across both individual and businesses. And some other key stats obviously being we move more than 5 billion in volume every single month. And so that's obviously quite a substantial amount of money that's crossing borders in all sorts of ways and forms. And so we are profitable and we have been for the past four consecutive years. So in our last financial results, we accumulated over 4 million in revenue. Um, and we can send money to over 50 different currencies worldwide and up to 150 different countries as well are covered. 
Um, we are growing and we have been for um, a long time. So we have over 2,500 employees to date, but we will also be hiring around 750 new employees over the ne next six to 12 months. Um, we are licensed, obviously, so we are a financially regulated business. We hold over 63 global licenses worldwide and uh, across 14 different jurisdictions. Um, just some other key uh, stats as well. So obviously we are growing and at quite a phenomenal rate as well. So we achieved 70% growth last year. And even though a lot of some businesses, especially around financial services, saw a decline with the recent COVID pandemic, whereas with WISE, we actually found a huge uplift because as many banks and customers, uh, they needed to find an alternative way of sending money cross border they couldn't go into a branch and they were looking for a digital solution. So it actually increased a vast amount of our growth, growth from that perspective. Perfect, so I'm just gonna talk a bit about sending money. So this is originally, as you could see in our mission statement of why we were founded. We're focused on making it easier for customers to send money cross border. And we're doing this at speeds that were unimaginable before as you can see in this example there is a tweet that is from one of our customers that's obviously sent a gbp to euro payment and it has taken less than 26 seconds from end to end and we're doing this in a low cost manner as well so we're typically a price leader across all of our 55 different currencies and we do that in two different ways so we always offer customers the real exchange rate so that's the same rate if you or I were to go onto Google today and say that I want to exchange X to Y, we always charge that real exchange rate. We don't hide any of our fees or spreads within that rate. Uh, we will charge an upfront transparent fee in order to process that payment. But as mentioned, we are a price leader within that. So we are a low cost, low margin business. So that's a bit about how we send money. Perfect, so this is obviously, you would all have know the traditional SWIFT network, which many banks use today in order to send money cross border. In this example, you can obviously see there's various different correspondent banks that are playing a role in delivering that end payment to the recipient bank, which in this example is obviously Lloyd's. As we know, this is very slow and adds quite a high level of complexity uh, in order to deliver that payment as each individual transaction has to be screened for AML, sanctions, fraud checks, and so on. Obviously, this results in quite high fees uh, for the customer. For example, I know some banks, in order to even receive a SWIFT payment, they can charge anywhere between eight to 10 pounds to actually receive that payment, which obviously um, reflects quite negatively from a customer standpoint as well, because not all of the money that they were originally uh, sent would arrive in that recipient bank. So WISE likes to do things a little bit differently, as you can see. So we don't want to be reliant on the SWIFT network. We believe we've built an alternative for that. Um, so you can see in this example, the customer is obviously wants to send from USD to GBP. Now, in order to do this, WISE completes two domestic payments to fulfill one international. So again, we've done this by going direct to payment schemes. So for example, we are direct members of Faster Payments within the UK, which is the instant uh, payment scheme within the UK to obviously deliver GBP. We are direct members of SEPA and also SEPA Instant to obviously fulfill this across the Eurozone. We are direct members of the Australian payment scheme, the Hungarian payment scheme. So that's a key strategy for ourselves, that we have total control of the payment. So we go directly to the payment scheme ourselves. When we can't get um, direct access to the payment scheme, we'll get indirect access through our banking partners. This obviously allows us to deliver the payment at a speed that was unimaginable before, but also, as you can imagine, it's at a completely low cost as well, because we're just doing two domestic payments to fulfill one international. So again, we're delivering speeds at 
way faster than the traditional SWIFT network would have been able to do, but again, allowing this at low cost. And we also have control over both ends of the payment. So obviously the pay-in method, but obviously the payout as well. As you can see with the SWIFT network, once the money leaves the customer's bank account, they have no control across all of those various different correspondence. So that's a bit about how we actually move money today. And now I'm going to talk a bit about WISE for banks specifically and what we can actually offer you today. Perfect. So TransferWISE for Banks is a fully managed international payments offering. So what that really means is, as I spoke about in the previous slide, we have control of the whole payment life cycle. So as many other providers out there today, they'll just do the last mile settlement or maybe they'll just manage a bit of the FX or the payment operations. Whereas with TransferWise, we manage that whole payment life cycle from start to finish. And there's kind of two things on this slide that I want to really pull out to ensure that we get the full understanding. So as you can see in that second box, embedded compliance. As I mentioned, we are a financially regulated institution and we have over 10 million customers that we serve worldwide. So when you partner with us, we are actually the responsible regulated entity that is uh, required to complete all of the transaction screening of that payment when it is moving cross border. So everything from what you can think of a PEP, sanctions, fraud checks, etc. that's on TransferWise to make sure that we are completing those relevant checks. Then, in terms of the treasury and operations, which again is a really key thing, we are responsible for all of the FX risk, meaning none of the risk now sits with the bank in order to deliver international payments for your customers. You no longer have to be holding Nostro, Vostro accounts, uh, tying up liquidity across this, handling payments that get stopped, any sort of operational flows, all of that headache and issue is now passed on to WISE and it's our responsible to deliver that. And then again, just on this, I'll just uh, pull out a few other things. So we're obviously an API led business, meaning once you embed that API and integrate it in a, uh, into your app or your website, that capability is just automatically uh, turned on. So your customers now have access to over 55 different currencies, delivering payments instantly, all through that API integration, meaning they never have to jump out and come log into the WISE application. It's all embedded into your own solution. And then just again, in terms of our front end, so we have delivered a few different things to make it easier for banks to integrate. For example, we have a design guide that talks through how the customer journey should be mapped out to ensure that you're getting the most out of our API. So now I'm going to talk a bit about why now. So why should banks be thinking about this and partnering with someone such as WISE? So transparency, first of all, is becoming law in Europe. So across the EU cross-border payment regulation, they're actually mandating that banks now show the total cost of the transfer meaning you will no longer be able to hide hidden fees um, and uh, in the exchange rate. You will have to show upfrontly to the customer how much this actually is costing them to date. So again, there's no ability um, to be saying that you offer free international transfers when in reality the fee is just being had, uh, hidden into the exchange rate. That is now becoming more and more prevalent that the uh, EU regulator wants to make it totally transparent to the customer so they understand how much this payment is costing them. And as you know from our mission, transparency is key for ourselves at WISE. So again, this is something that it's not only that we need to inherit, but it is becoming more mandated across the EU in general for delivering international payments. And now, secondly, I'm going to talk a bit about neobanks. This has been a huge topic recently, as we all know. There's many popping up, not only across the UK, but obviously Euro, uh, Europe as well. And as you know, or may you may not know, WISE has already partnered with a few uh, European uh, challengers out there today, some being N26, Monzo in the UK, but there's obviously many others that we haven't integrated to and they offer international payments to their customers. 
But a few things that we've realized, neobanks are using FX as a key differentiator to accelerate customer acquisition. So again, we understand that customers need international banking needs. They want multi-currency accounts. They want to be able to send money at speed and at low cost. But again, we've partnered with some of these and we haven't partnered with all of them. But even so, we at WISE processed over 870 million from European neobanks in 2020 and over 1 billion from UK neobanks in 2020. This is quite a large amount of money that has been moved just from neobanks alone. So again, this doesn't take into account the large incumbents that we all know and love, such as Barclays, HSBC, Nas West, Deutsche Bank, none of them are taken into account. This is purely neobank volume. So this again is showing that graph is just continuously going up and up. There's no uh, sort of dip. Customers are choosing neobanks for their FX and international banking needs instead of going to their in tr traditional incumbent. So there is an opportunity for banks to partner with someone such as ourselves to bring this volume back into your app and get that volume back from your customers, gain that uh, engagement back. So again, as we spoke about, there's an upside in winning that FX volume, but this also generates other volume as well. I'm going to show you a few stats from some of our banking partners and how they achieve this. So this is a screenshot from one of our banking partners that is based out in Switzerland, as you can see at Swiss francs. So they um, obviously partnered with ourselves to deliver international transfers for their customers. So their customers obviously hold Swiss francs with this bank, uh, with this given bank. They partnered with ourselves to allow their customers to send those Swiss francs across the world, as I mentioned, to over 55 different currencies. So as you can see there, we charge a transfer wise fee. So that is a fee that we charge in order to process that payment. Um, and we would offer banks that partner with us a revenue share on that fee collected. And then you can see another fee below that called a convenience fee. This is a relatively new feature that we actually offer now today. So banks can also add another fee on top, which we have defined as a convenience fee and that is a hundred percent your own markup and there's so much flexibility that you can do with that so you can charge that on some of the currencies that we offer you can charge it on all of them it can be a variable fee it can be a fixed fee it can be a fee across just a certain threshold there's a huge amount of flexibility that can be done with that and again it's a hundred percent your own markup so that's pure revenue to you plus the revenue that we would give you on the transfer wise fee as well. So again, this just shows a bit about the revenue potential when you do partner with someone such as ourselves. And now I just wanted to show you a bit about customer acquisition. So as I mentioned in the slide before, it's not just about winning FX volume back and gaining revenue through this. There is also an opportunity for you to increase your customer acquisition. So we ran a recent survey with some of our banking partners customers asking them how influential was the WISE partnership in opening a bank account with that given bank. So as you can see here, 60% of customers said that WISE was influential in their decision to open a bank with that bank account. And again, we know this, as we showed in the Neobank slide, um, in terms of the volume that we're getting, FX is becoming more prevalent and far much more of a need for the international customers that people are serving today. So again, this shows that there's a strong customer acquisition standpoint as well that can be gained post uh, an integration with ourselves. And then finally, WISE is also making uh, customers more sticky. So again, international made customers more likely to make that bank their primary bank account, which we would define as getting their salary paid into it. And I think this is a really key thing that any bank wants to achieve because I believe it's become so easy now to open a current account with all of these new neobanks. You could have one in less than five minutes. So we kind of are now in the time frame of people can have anywhere between three to five um, 
current accounts that they use for all various different needs. But you really do want to be the one, the primary bank account where they get their salary paid into. And again, international and wise was a key reason why customers chose to make that bank account their bank account, with 45% saying yes, it was influential in that decision. And then a little bit more. So again, integrations with WISE have resulted in an increase in customer engagement. So we will always do a big marketing push post an integration with ourselves to ensure that the market knows that we have partnered, that we can gain FX coverage and volume back into your app, and making your customers aware of the integration to ensure that they're using it as much as possible. And we have actually seen for one pound in FX revenue generated, partners have seen anywhere between three to five in non-payment revenues. That's everything that you can think of to overdrafts, to mortgages, to loans, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that good stuff that a bank wants to achieve can be achieved also when you partner with someone such as ourselves. And then finally, to summarize, so why should you do this? Just all of those good slides in one now. So again, there's a huge opportunity for you to bring the very best UX to your customers. So you could massively increase your coverage to up to 57 different currencies and over 80 countries. Payments delivered in speed that used to be unimaginable and a key staff being 50% of these are delivered instantly. The ability to track your payment and obviously very minimal investment needed. It's an API integration and we are working with obviously and Digit, which makes it even easier for a bank to integrate our services than coming to us directly. Obviously, the ability to massively increase your market share from a customer acquisition standpoint, but also gaining all of that 870 million back from neobanks in the European region as well. Obviously, and then to finally saying upside of retention as well, with deeper levels of customer engagement, a high MPS score as well. So in my opinion, I'm a little bit biased, but I think it's a win-win situation for Indigit, Wise, and any bank that chooses to partner with ourselves. Um, so big thank you now. I'm just going to pass you back over to Kirsten to finish it all. Okay, yeah, thanks for the great overview, Jane. Um, yeah, I think um, what you what you told is like really a win-win situation um, between um, banks, WISE and us. And yeah, as I said, so WISE is a very strong use case in our ecosystem approach. And um, in the beginning, I have said that Indigit's goal is to make it as easy as possible to implement such use cases. And now the question is actually, how do we address this goal with our solution? Um, so if we have a look on the right side, um, we can see that this overview we were looking at in the beginning has uh, slightly changed. This is because we introduced some like, um, yeah, some like some structure. And so on the bottom, there are pre-integrated fintech solutions of our ecosystem. So instead of a bank integrating a new use case, Endicha takes care of integrating new services and um, maintaining existing integrations together with the fintechs. And we can only realize this um, because we have a standardized set standardized set of open banking APIs to access the banking backend, the core banking systems, but um, also to bring the services into the bank's front end. And um, the bank integrates only once against those APIs and can then reuse this integration to exchange data with all other fintechs that support those APIs. So in the case of WISE, the bank would integrate the customer's API, the account's API, and the payment's API. And if the bank decides later to implement further use cases like Contavista, it reuses this integration instead of integrating the backend systems again. And um, Contavista requires the same open banking APIs as WISE. So all the bank has to do is to activate the Contavista front end. And um, 
yeah, this reduces drastically the implementation cost and the time to market um, to implement new customer use cases. And we have a centralized and highly secure infrastructure that handles authorizations and authentication flows between the different parties. And it also provides a um, yeah, seamless single sign-on experience to the end customer. And all in all, our platform is core banking agnostic, so we can settle on top of any core banking system to provide our solution. And now before we move over to the Q&A session, I would actually uh, love to demo you um, device and the digit integration. So um, in the scenario here, I am um, Johanna Maybach. I am a customer of the Berlin Business Bank, and I am logged on in my personal um, in my personal online banking. And my brother recently moved to Switzerland, and he asked me to send him some money. So I see that my bank supports foreign transfers. I click on that, and now um, a pop-up window opens. And um, here I can see, okay, all right, um, I, can, I can send uh, money to my brother. So um, I can change between, um, I can choose between different currencies. So there are British pounds, but also um, Romanian UD. And um, actually I want to send the money to a Swiss bank account. So I choose Swiss France. I can then enter the, the amount here um, that I want to send. But what I, uh, what's also great, I can actually enter um, the concrete amount in Swiss franc that my brother should receive. And the amount in euro is calculated accordingly. And also what I really like about this is I know exactly um, how much money I sent, how much money my brother receives, but also at which conditions I send it. So I can see clearly the fee that I pay on this um, transaction and I see the exchange rate that I get with this um, transaction. So I continue. And as I am a new user to WISE, I have to create a account first. So WISE is asking me to access some uh, personal data um, from me. I agree to that and I continue. And with just those two clicks, I already completed the whole onboarding um, to WISE. And now before I continue with the payment, I have to um, um, grant access to WISE that uh, WISE can access my, my list of accounts. So I enter my um, second factor password, I accept, and then I can continue with my, with my payment. Um, yeah, on my first usage, I have to add um, a recipient first. So I enter my brother's name. I enter his IBAN. And then I have to choose the account from which I want to make the payment. I choose my main account. And um, before I actually send the, the payment, um, I get, um, again, a summary of the exact amount that I am sending, the exact amount that my brother's receiving, um, the conditions at which I'm sending money, so the fees, the total exchange rate that I receive, and also um, how much time it takes until the money arrives at my brother's account. And then I continue to authorizing this um, payment. And then just within a few steps, I have sent uh, money to my brother's um, bank account in Switzerland. And actually what I really like about it is it was from the very beginning throughout the whole process um, very clear at what conditions I'm sending money. It was super easy. I didn't have to enter much data. Um, and I just had to complete a few steps um, to, to send the payment. And as I'm now an onboard, onboarded user at TransferWise, um, at Rise, um, 
I don't have to, um, I, I can just skip a few steps um, with my next payment. So this will be even um, less steps in the future. Okay, then um, let's switch back. And we are actually at the end of our webinar. And before we move to the Q&A session, I want to conclude with a brief summary of our talk. So Jane has presented WISE as a very concrete example how banks can create complementary revenue streams by partnering with um, innovative third parties and by offering such an innovative service to its end customers a bank can increase customer retention and stay competitive in the market on the one hand but also win um, new customers and yeah by integrating wise via the indigit platform a bank can reuse this integration and very easily extend its services to further customer uh, and customer ready use cases in the future. And there we can choose from a set of pre-integrated um, chosen best of breed fintechs. Also our ecosystem hub offers end customer ready use cases, which can be integrated um, into the banking front at either lightweight via our widget manager, but also individually via an API. And finally, WISE and Indigit um, offer embedded compliance and partner services, which allows a bank to reduce its operational and compliance costs drastically. All right, and um, this is actually the end of our webinar. And um, I'm very happy to answer uh, questions that you have. So thank you very much, Kerstin and Jane. We did indeed receive a number of questions in the meantime during your very interesting presentations. So first questions, what are the best tools for automated pre-authorized debit payments from international clients, like from the UK, EU or Asian countries? Jane, could you please unmute your microphone? Ah, oh, sorry, typical, very amateur move there. Um, I can take this one, obviously. Um, I think we're alluding to the ability of being able to send direct debits, I would presume on an ongoing basis for everything such as invoices and so on. Um, so that is something that we are definitely building into the API at the moment. So for example, if you have an outgoing payment every single month for whichever reason, paying university fees, or maybe it's an invoice for an SME, that is something that we are going to build that functionality into the API. It is not there yet. However, as kind of Kristen walked you through that really good demo, if that beneficiary was already saved into your WISE profile, it'd be very easy to just set up a payment and make it uh, really seamlessly enter the amount and then it would just go straight away. So again, not having to reset up a beneficiary each time. However, it is something that we are definitely going to build into the API in the future. Thank you very much. Next question, how can innovation be fostered in this area? Kerstin, maybe this is a question for you. Um, well, I assume that this question is targeted at how can innovations be fostered in general in banks? Um, at least that's how I understand the question. And I guess you could hold a whole webinar about that. But um, yeah, I think efforts are um, or banks have to put efforts in many different aspects into that. So this also, I think, requires change in the organizational and cultural mindsets um, of banks. But I think actually the more interesting part here is how can Indigit actually support in this matter? And um, I think what we offer to banks with our solution is a very reduced risk to implement new use cases because we have a plug and play technology um, with which you can very easily implement those new use cases. So you have lower upfront costs and with that it's more easily to test um, a partner use case if that works for your customers. 
And also we help with pre-selecting the most innovative players in the market. Um, and also with that, we provide standardized partner contracts and we can assist with our experience and our expertise from previous integration projects. Thank you very much. Next question. We are looking for a white label solution. Is this also available? Yeah, so I can take that one in Kirsten out at any point you want to, if you mean from an FX provider. So we are not pure white label in the sense that there's no understanding of who is actually doing the transfer for you. So I think in the demo again that Kirsten kind of presented, there was one screen that did say power by wise. So it is extremely minimal in what we do have in terms of the whole end to end customer journey. It is by no means plastered everywhere and anywhere. The only reason why we do actually show the end customer that it is wise that is doing the international movement of money for them is because they agree to our terms and conditions. As you saw, we set up a profile for Kristen during that journey. That's because the money is actually moving on WISE's license. We are the financially regulated company to undertake all of the relevant PEP sanctions, fraud checks, etc. So that is why we want to make it uh, clear to the customer for those reasons. Um, so it's not pure white label in the sense, but again, as you saw in the demo that Kirsten walked you through, it is very minimal as well. So it's a co-branded solution. Is there any, anything you would like to add, Kirsten? Um, yeah, what I could add at this point is that I'm not sure if the question was mainly only targeted on FX payments, but also in other areas, we do um, offer white label um, solutions. So, um, yeah, that's maybe something that I can add from my side. <laughs> okay, all right, next question. What are the concrete business models or revenue streams for banks within the ecosystem approach you have just presented? Kassin, this is definitely one for you, I guess. Um, sorry, could you repeat that question again? <laughs> what are the concrete business models or revenue streams for banks within the ecosystem you have just presented? Well, I mean, um, banks can um, connect different partner services, um, so they can actually provide um, complementary products to their end customers. And with those complementary products, they can benefit uh, via a revenue stream that the third parties have to the end customer. So via um, offering um, or making their end customer channels available um, to, to third parties and innovative um, fintechs then can provide additional offerings to their customers and then benefit um, from a revenue stream with those third parties. Okay, thank you very much. Next questions. We are interested in a B2B FX payment solutions for Swiss francs, for Nordic currencies, Canadian, Australian and New Zealand dollars. So generally, what currencies uh, are applicable? So I can take that one, I think. Um, so that's exactly what WISE does. So we make it easier for customers, not only individual customers, but businesses to send money cross-border. And we're actually seeing far more business banks come to us to integrate our API to allow their business customers to send money cross-border. Um, so all of those uh, currencies that Sebastian listed there, that is supported within our coverage at the moment. Um, if interested, I obviously can share a complete coverage across all 55 different currencies, but the ones that were just mentioned in that Pacific question, we cover ourselves at WISE. Thank you very much. So next question, where do banks, most banks currently stand now and what are the specific implementation challenges? Um, I think that's a good question actually for me. So. I mean, I understand this question in terms of um, where are banks now with their innovation journey or with the innovation pool? 
And um, we believe that banks are, most banks are at the very beginning of this journey. I think um, most of them have understood that there's a very high demand um, of their customers for innovative services that um, the, go beyond their core banking. But as I said, um, I, I believe that banks are at the very beginning of this journey. And I also like the challenges that banks can have here are varying. So this can be organizational and cultural aspects, maybe a lack of agility or innovative mindset, um, but also, of course, um, high compliance and regulatory regulatory standards. And I guess there's a lot um, for banks to handle internally. But I guess, again, the more interesting part here is um, how we from a digit can support that. So yeah, as I said, um, our goal is to make it as easy as possible for banks to adapt new innovative services. And um, yeah, with our plug and play technology, banks can rather drive a proof of concept with our platform as they have lower upfront costs. But yeah, we do also support in compliance topics by providing yeah, standardized partner contracts and with our expertise and experience from previous integrations. Thank you very much. Next question refers to banks. How do established banks react to new third-party FX payment solutions? Do they mainly consider them as competitors or partners? Jane, this is definitely a question for you, I guess. Yeah, I think I can take that one. Um, so it's a really good question, to be honest. So if I'll be really honest with you, I think a few years ago, they did very much see us as a competitor. Um, and then obviously the wise for banks offer is relatively new, to be honest. It's only around three to four years old. Um, but we have seen definitely a shift in mindset. And the main reasonings for that being, as I showed you on that slide, in terms of the volume we are getting from neobanks, we can actually get that information for incumbent banks as well. So we can tell a bank how many of your customers are actually using us to date. We can give you how many uh, direct customers and numbers are using us, but we can also show you the volume that we're getting from your customers. And that's a really key thing that we always try to show banks because they probably wouldn't see that information and they wouldn't have any sort of idea how many of their customers are using us. But we can obviously see how a customer funds the transfer. So as you think about it, if you can actually tell a bank, well, let's say we are getting 50 million of your volume from FX, their mind shift is going to change and think, okay, maybe I should partner with some, um, for some Pacific currencies, that's also something that we're seeing. Maybe they want to still keep USD and Euro for themselves, and that goes through their traditional bank rails, and maybe they'll use us for Swift banks uh, or Polish Lottie, et cetera. So there's that flexibility. Um, definitely seeing a shift in mindset, and I think that is also driven by the neo banks and how much attraction they've grown, but also the volume that we're seeing from the incumbents as well as a big pusher to shift that mindset. And we have, we have another question. How is your market share in Europe, in the UK and globally? How yeah, has so it developed? Sorry. Thank you, uh, Sebastian. So again, that's a really good question. Um, so for example, specifically in the UK, we recently have done some analysis with a key consultancy over there. And we believe that we have around 55% of the market share in the UK for cross-border payments. Now that's under a certain threshold. So we would define that as uh, all payments probably within 150K and lower, we would see that we have 55% of that market within the UK. Now within Europe, I wouldn't have that specific uh, stat in terms of how much cross-border that we have. But again, if you think about it from the wise numbers that we originally displayed, we move more than 5 billion in volume every single month and we have over 10 million customers worldwide. We will be also onboarding um, probably around six to seven banks in the next two to three months. So again, those numbers are dramatically going to increase over that period of time. Thank you very much. And again, we have a more technical question. What is the actual value at of having a, an intermediary such as in digit in between? Um, I mean, I can just highlight, um, like, yeah, like the benefits that um, our solution offers. So as we have 
pre-integrated fintechs and we also um, take care of the maintenance of those integrations. The bank has only only has to integrate once against our um, open banking APIs and then we use these integration for multiple use cases. So, I mean, which benefits does this bring? So, um, obviously you have reduced setup costs, you have reduced running costs, um, you have reduced costs for maintenance and you don't have to, you don't have to ensure that you're compatible with 10 different API versions from 10 different fintechs, but actually only with the newest uh, version of a digit. So in total, you have a high potential for cost savings. And also um, you have a way faster time to market with implementing new use cases. And with that also um, a reduced risk that some uh, use case might not work for your customers. And we have another question on Indigit. Someone wants to know, how does Indigit actually earn revenue from the ecosystem? That's an interesting one. Uh, that's a good question. So we have different models. Um, it also depends on like what we agree on with the fintech, what we agree on with the bank. But um, on the one side, we, we earn money via license fees. So there is like a fixed fee um, per month to to run our platform um, we also um, earn money via uh, yeah api usages but in also in some cases um, we agree on a revenue share between the fintech the bank and us so these are three different um, possibilities how we earn money with our product So, is the solution only for FX payments or is there a possibility to transfer directly, let's say, from Swiss francs to Swiss francs? I can take that question if you want. Uh, yeah, so we do do same, uh, same currency payments as well. Um, you can send euros to euros, you can send GBP to GBP. Uh, it is something that we do. Uh, it's not exactly what our mission is focused on delivering. We do still see some uh, customers use us for that use case. It can be done. Um, however, we may not be always the cheapest option to do it that way because, you, again, you're just sending the same currencies and we're optimized uh, for doing cross-border. Okay, thank you very much. Next question. So, will conciliation be done with you instead of reconciliation with our nostrils? If not, how can this work? Yes, yeah, so I can take that. That's a really good question again. Um, so, we would be fully acting as your correspondent bank. So, as you would usually have Nostra and Vostra accounts with various different liquidity across that traditional SWIFT network, you no longer would need to do that. We are the ones that would be managing the liquidity. Now, we would settle in various different ways. So, for example, if your customer issues a payment through our integration, you would obviously debit that customer's account. That money would then be held in a suspense account, and then we would settle throughout various different times of the day through a bulk settlement model. Now, that's usually the way that we do it across the SEPA zone, but for example, in the UK, um, we settle on a transfer by transfer basis usually because it's an instant payment scheme, so we just get the GBP automatically from the customer's account and then we process it. Again, this is something that we could look into um, post an integration, but they're the two main sort of models that we would go through. Okay, thank you very much. The time is over and there are no more questions left. Should you feel you still have open questions, please also feel free to contact us mm -hmm. directly, Kerstin Gottelt or Jane McAvoy from WISE. Thank you very much for your time, for your interest, and let's keep in touch. Let's keep discussing all your open questions. Thank you very much and please join our upcoming webinars. Thanks and have a nice day.